Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome back to part two of Zooming Through Life and Death. And today we'll be dealing more with life. It's early in the morning and a typical day for me starts by watering all my trees. So here I go. Some of the trees don't need any water. When I'm going around watering the trees, I'm not just watering them, I'm also inspecting the trees every day, checking them for pests and diseases and any problems the trees might be developing. A bird's been digging in my pot here, so, you know, every day I have to come out and fix moss or do something. We have a lot of birds in the neighborhood and they, they love to dig in my trees. So I usually place a lot of rocks around it and that seems to stop that. It looks kind of well, a little ugly, but uh, it works. I had to put rocks around my Osage Orange Forest. They were digging in that. My Avatar Grove, they kept digging at the one end here, so I put this pot up against it. And that's, you know, prevented birds from picking away at the moss there. And yeah, you just gotta come up with solutions. It helps having the trees fairly tightly packed on the bench. That way there's nowhere for a bird to land and you know they don't feel they don't feel comfortable when it's all jumbled like this so keeping them all packed together tightly seems to work quite well too i'm going to start today's work by potting my kapok or carpok trees into this nice japanese bonsai pot step number 1 is to remove this ridiculously low priced price sticker off it 699 from value village and it's made in japan it's a beautiful pot so I'll get that scraped off. The reason I'm putting these seedlings that are in training in such a nice pot is if you leave the pots on your shelf and never use them, they never really get a nice patina on them. If you put the pots outside and they're exposed to the weather and the elements, they're handled and they start to get a, a patina on them. And that's something that's hard to duplicate. For an old tree you want an old looking pot and that's just a way of you know starting that patina off is to get the pot outside and get it you know being used i've got my drainage screens in place and i'll add a base layer of soil and the soil is half perlite and half turfus or safety zorb is what I use. Okay, I think that's good for a base layer. I can plant the trees on top of that. I've got three sizes of Kapok trees. I've got a large one, a medium, and a small. But I will be pruning this large one down in size. It's way too tall. On the tall one, there is a branch down lower here. So I'll prune just above that branch. And Maybe we'll get something else sprouting out in that area. Here I go. Just like that. Now that would grow as a cutting. So I'll put that in water and we'll see what happens. That's got the three kapoks pruned down to height and now I can plant them in this new pot. I'm going to choose this tree as my number one tree. It's about the same thickness in diameter as this other tree here. But the bark is more developed. You can see it's kind of that gray color at the base. 
And then as you go up, it stays that nice gray color until you kind of reach the first branch. The other tree, it's also got the gray color at the base, not quite as gray, and it starts going green kind of, you know, part way up the trunk. So it's not quite as mature of a tree. The other one is just quite small. It's just starting to get its gray color on the trunk. All right, I'll get the first Kapok out of the pot, my number one tree. I have no idea what the root system will look like on this. It's not there it comes. I can see some fine root hairs. It's looking okay. So I'll rake out the soil. I'll begin in the center and just rake outwards. So all my other Kapok trees died. They got too cold. That uh, one year, that fall, where I was getting the roof on the plant room redone, I had to keep the trees outside until the plant room was done. So I had a tarp over the benches and a heater running, but I guess it got too cold for them and they all died. That was the ones in my rainforest. So these are cuttings that I gave to Bonsai J a a long time ago and he gave some of them back to me. It was really nice of him, so thanks, Bonsai Jay. So we'll get this rainforest underway again using these trees and cuttings off of them. This time, we'll make sure they stay nice and warm. You can see it has a really nice radial root base. That's one advantage of starting a tree from a cutting, is you usually get you know a fairly good root base on them. I'll keep breaking away at the roots here and we'll take it over to the washing station and wash off all the remains of the old soil. There's the drainage screen at the bottom, just like that. Just a little more raking here. These are very fine roots. Uh, I gotta be careful not to damage them too much, but I do wanna rake out any crossing roots. So kind of like Coleman hair. You gotta get rid of the tangles. See, there's some tangles there that I raked out. And that just keeps your nice radial roots. And then they eventually develop into really nice thick surface roots. Okay, so that is ready to be taken over and get washed. I've got the roots washed and you can see that there's roots coming up from this level. There's some more down here, more down here. So there's kind of multi-planes of roots. But I think I'm going to leave it for now because if I reduce it to one root plane, I don't think I'll have enough roots to support the tree. So I'll probably just take off, you know, maybe one or two of these higher roots and then leave all these ones for later. All right, here I go with the root pruning. So I'll start with this, the root that's highest up and I'll remove that like that. And we'll rotate it around. Another one here I can remove, and a couple here. A little tiny one there, a little one there, and I think that'll be it. I will prune some of these longer roots down here, just kind of trimming them off, and then if there's any, there is one pointing straight down here, I'll have to remove that one, like that. Now, removing the ones growing straight down doesn't kill the root off. It develops more fine feeder roots coming down, but it stops them from thickening up and getting out of size. Let's trim that one off too. So that kind of gets me a nice flat root base. I'll just comb it out. And I'll just trim off the very longest roots kind of keeping the root mass a little more compact. And that's it, that's uh, ready for planting. I'm going to plant this first tree off to the one side and with all the branches kind of fanning away from the center of the little mini forest or clump of trees. So probably somewhere about here, so it has enough room. I'll just rake out the roots before I put some soil in here. like that, and then I'll fill it in. 
just to hold the tree upright. Okay, and now I can plant the other two trees. I'll get the other two kapoks prepped the exact same way, and then we'll come back and plant them. I've got the roots washed on both trees, and this other tree has quite a bit thicker trunk at the base and a better root system. So I think I'm going to change this to be my number one tree. And the smaller one, you can see it's just grown from a cutting. And you know, there'll just be a light root pruning on that, but not too much work on this tree. I do have to prune off some of these longer roots just to kind of balance the root system. So you don't get one vigorous root taking off and kind of uh, growing thicker than all the rest. So that's looking really good. Just comb it out a bit. Get some of those tangles out. Oh, that's good. I'll just prune off one's going a funny direction there. One's sticking up here. That one's a little high. I'm going to remove it. And there's another one going a funny direction there. The rest are looking pretty good. I, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, now it's ready for planting. Now let's look at our little one here. So again, I'll just do a light pruning to the roots, just reducing some of the length. And that's going to be about it. The theme of this video is life and death and all my original Kapok trees died, but now the cuttings will live on and create a new forest. I'm going to rearrange the trees based on this, you know, new trunk thickness here that was kind of in the soil. So I'll take the original tree I planted out and we'll put the thickest one there. And again, I'll have it, I'll have it leaning away. Sort of like that. So it has a bit of a curve and then goes vertical. I'll comb the roots out, make sure they're all in order. There's a, Root I pruned off. So that's looking pretty good. And then you notice the roots are kind of going horizontal now, and I don't want that. I want them a little higher and kind of tapering down into the soil. So I'll lift the tree up a bit, put some soil around, and then work it in underneath the root system and that'll get those roots going in a nice gentle taper from the trunk into the soil. And as the tree grows larger and larger, it'll uh, work out really nicely because you can slowly lift the tree out of the soil more and more. Okay, that's nicely in place. All right, let's get number two tree planted. And I'll put, I'll put that I think over here. And I'll comb out the roots once more. Like that. And again, I'll put the soil around the tree, holding it in place like that. And then I've got my third tree that I'll put in behind. I think the third tree can go in there. It's not quite in the middle of these two trees. It's offset to the smaller tree, just a little bit. Again, I'll comb out the roots. And then get some soil in around the root system. Lift the tree up a bit, work the soil in. And that's stable. Let's have a look at the composition before I commit to this arrangement. Here's a look at the composition and it looks a little, there's a lot of space on this left hand side here. It looks like everything should be shifted over, but I'm thinking that that tallest tree is going to grow quite thick in future. And I think it'll look quite, it'll look good and balanced. I'll keep the other trees pruned more so than the main tree. I'll let that grow and thicken up. And uh, yeah, I think it'll look quite good. Yeah, I'm going to leave it like that. You know, 
I probably would shift it to the left a little bit, but I think, as I say, that main tree is going to grow thicker, and I think it'll kind of fill in that space more in the future, maybe even at the end of this year, because these things grow like rockets in the summer. So we'll do that. We'll just leave it as is, fill in the rest of the soil, and water the trees. The soil scoop's awesome. So I will have to place some stones on top to keep all the trees in place so they don't tip over. I will put it in the greenhouse and that'll stop the wind blowing around until the roots kind of get established. I need just a little more soil in this corner. Bit back here. All right. Give them a good thorough soaking. There's the ant crawling up there. This tree has some scale insects on it, so I'm going to clean those all up before I put it in the greenhouse, and I'll show you what I do. I probably should have cleaned the trees up first, but, and the water's running out the drainage holes now, so that is good. Let's look up top now, and you can see some of the leaves aren't looking very good. They're a little yellowy and those leaves can be pruned off. I don't know if they have scale on the backside. Not too much, there's a one there, I think. This one, oh, this one's got it. Look at the scale on there. So yeah, that those older leaves that are kind of yellowy can be pruned off, and we'll just leave, you know, this tree doesn't seem to have any scale insects on it. Well, there's one on the leaf there, but very few. So I'll keep the fresher leaves on top and prune off the older leaves and that'll be step one. All right, so step one is to remove these older leaves that are not doing a lot of uh, photosynthesis anyway. They're kind of old and yellowed, so take those off. And that'll remove a lot of the scale insects. Not 100%, but yeah, they, all these leaves had scale insects on them. You can see them all on here. Bumps all over the bottom. There's another one with bumps all over the bottom. So I'll just keep going, yeah. If you have a K-Poc bonsai, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of scale because they just seem to really like these trees for some reason. So I'm looking underneath the leaves now and all the rest of the remaining leaves have very few scale insects on them, if any. So that's a good start that gets rid of probably 95% of the scale insect, the blisters on the trees. The best method of disposing of these leaves is I put them in a plastic bag, a sealed plastic bag, and then I just leave it out in the sun for a week or so and that'll kill everything inside. The leaves on a Kapok tree don't like being sprayed with full strength soap and water. So I normally use 40 parts water and one part dish soap, but that's too strong for these leaves. It leaves them spotted and, you know, not looking very good. So I've got to dilute my soap and water even more. So probably 80 parts water to one part dish soap, and that seems to work on them. In step two of taking all the scale insects off these Kapok trees, I'll be visually inspecting the trees and just removing any blisters that are left behind. So you've got to check every part of the tree, the trunks, the branches, the leaves, and just rub off any blisters you see with your finger. Those blisters are a protective coating, so if you spray it with soap and water, the insects will still survive inside the little blister. So you've got to scrape the blister first, spray it with soap and water, and that kills everything. And it's really important to get these trees insect free before you bring them into a greenhouse or back into the plant room. If you have any insects on them, they'll just spread to all the rest of your trees. Everything's looking in order. I've got all the visible scale insects removed. So now I'll spray with the soap and water my diluted mixture. And you just have to wet all the leaves down top and bottom and the trunks and the branches. 
I let the mixture sit on the trees for a couple of minutes and then I rinse it off with rainwater. You can spray the trees once a week until all your scale insect problems are gone. The trees have sat for a few minutes, so I'll start rinsing away the soap, getting underneath the leaves first with just rainwater, spraying all around to rinse that soap off, and then I'll come in with the watering can and give it a good rinsing. Rinsing out the soil and everything. And that should take care of the scale insects. I'll put the kapok trees in the greenhouse now and we'll move on to our next tree. The next tree I'll be potting up is my ficus larata or fiddle leaf fig. I planted one of these before. I uh, raked out the roots, root pruned it, cut the trunk down very small and it was in the winter in the plant room and it started sprouting new leaves and I was, you know, excited it worked and then it, it died. I think it just didn't have enough warmth and sunlight to bring it back to life. So today I'll be doing the same type of procedure, a drastic trunk chop, root pruning, and we'll see if it works in the summertime. At the moment, this tree is so top heavy, it, it won't even stand up. And especially if the wind blows, it just tips it over. So I thought, where should I trunk chop it? And I was thinking, well, maybe I should keep you know, some foliage on it, prune it off to here. And I, I think that's a good idea, getting rid of most of the top, but I'll keep some green leaves on it, and maybe that'll help it recover. So that's the first step. I'll chop off the trunk, leaving a few green leaves. All right, here I go. So I've got a couple of leaves down low, and there's another smaller one up there. And then they get pretty big, so I'm going to prune it off here. done. So the top of the tree, which is acts like a sail, is gone. I can, uh, I'll probably root this as a cutting. I'll try. I'll uh, remove all these lower leaves. And I think I'll just leave maybe a couple of leaves on top. Maybe not even that. I'll just leave the cutting. We'll plant that, just putting it in some bonsai soil, keeping it in the greenhouse, and hopefully it'll come back to life. I think it will. These uh, Most ficuses root quite easily from cutting, so I'm just removing some of the dead leaves from down below here. Yeah, so that should make a good cutting. I'm ready to plant the cutting. I've got a bonsai pot, bonsai soil in it, and I'll put the tree in it, right on the center. All I want to do is develop a nice radial root base, so. And that should do. I'll water that and put it in the greenhouse. All right, here I go with the water. And hopefully next time you see this plant, it will have some green leaves on it and a root system. I've run out of my medium-sized stones, so I've just only got sort of pebbles left, but they'll work. I'll just put them around the base of the cutting. Holds the cutting in place. The rocks help stop water evaporating from the soil. It kind of keeps the soil a little more moist. So that should be good. I'll put that in the greenhouse. The cuttings of my silk floss trees are doing really well. It's funny, after I made the video, I kind of assumed that they were easy to root from cuttings. And I was reading, I thought I'd better check, and I was reading online, and it said they're difficult to root from cuttings. So I guess I lucked out, I don't know. Maybe just having the greenhouse and misting them in good care. They've rooted, and I'll show you them now. Okay, into the greenhouse we go. I've gotta be careful, I got all kinds of plants all over the floor now. So, there's the silk floss trees. I don't know if you can see them very well. There they are. You can see they're sprouting all kinds of leaves up top. 
I'll try and get you a top view of them. So there. And there's a bunch of things that have sprouted in the soil and I don't know if there's suckers that have come up or if I just had seeds in the soil, but they look, they look like the silk floss trees, but uh, I don't know, I guess we'll see as they grow. Back to my fiddle leaf ficus. I'll have to prune the roots that are coming out the bottom of the pot. You can see them growing out the drainage holes and then I'll be able to get the tree out of the pot. All right, I'll prune away what I can with my pruners. There's a, one large root here. I think most of the roots are coming off of that. So I go with that. There's another smaller root up this drainage hole. Like that. And the rest are okay. I'll be able to pull it out of the pot. So let's try that now. Let's grab the tree. Ease it out. Wow. Definitely packed with roots in there. The next step is to rake out the root system. So again, I'll start from the center of the tree and rake outwards. I don't think this will be real easy to rake out because it's so packed in here. This tree, I just bought it from a big box store. Um, they're quite inexpensive here. Uh, I think I got this for $6.99. So, yeah, they're quite common as houseplants, these. Terrible tree for bonsai. <laughs> it's the worst tree imaginable. But, if you want to grow a large leaf bonsai, this is the tree. It's got the largest leaves I've ever seen on a sort of a, well, pretty well any tree you can grow indoors. Yeah, I'm going to have to do some, these roots are wrapped around here really well. I think I'll have to kind of do some pulling, get them unwound around the pot here, or where they were wound around the pot. This tree is going to take a bit of root work. I might end up growing this almost as a large cutting too. But we'll try and keep these nice radial surface roots. They're, uh, they're not bad. When you're picking a tree out from the, the store, always look at the surface roots. And that, uh, if you get good surface roots, then that's the start of a good tree. It doesn't really matter what's happening up top. That can be pruned and shaped. And, but your roots is the best. It's a good starting point to get a good root system. So I don't know. Some of these surface roots may not even be alive. Uh, I think they are. But they're... Yeah, I don't know. They look pretty dried up. Might be the roots that are further down that are better to use. I'll keep combing. It looks like the soil is a mixture of peat moss and perlite, which isn't bad, it drains well. It's actually a fairly good soil. Maybe holds a little too much moisture, but it's not bad. These roots are just so packed in here. I'm going to have to cut away some of them. I just can't comb this out, it's too dense. So I'll just cut away the layer on the outside I don't like doing this, but that's why I tend to repot more often before they get so root bound like this. Once they're root bound, it's difficult to comb them out and work on the roots. So there's that outer layer that's growing against the pot. The roots just hit the edge of the pot and they keep going round and round. So once I get that off, it might help with combing out the roots. Yeah, it's much less dense on the inside here. So that's got a lot of the roots kind of sorted out a bit. This me something to work with. So I'm going to start a bit of pruning. There's a root growing straight down here. Get rid of that and then I can get that off the bottom. Trying to get rid of some of these thick roots down at the bottom here. I 
it's always best not to just go blindly cutting into your root system because sometimes you cut one root up here and the whole root mass falls off they're all connected to one root so it's best to try and figure out what's going on with the root system and then start to cut I think we'll be able to sort this root system out quite nicely it's much easier to comb now that that ring of roots is gone so I'm going to trim off some of these really long roots. You can see how long they are. I won't be keeping them that long, so I can shorten them. I have another one here. Some more here. Another one here. I get some of my wilder roots pruned back and then I'll continue combing. So the trunks on these ficus liratus are quite slow to thicken up. You can get quite a big tree and it'll still have a fairly small diameter trunk. And I'm thinking the reason for that might be that They've evolved in nature with these giant leaves and I'm sure when the wind comes up it blows the tree around and maybe with a thicker trunk it wouldn't bend as much in the wind and it might just snap the tree off. So I'm thinking with those huge leaves it probably has a narrow trunk that's flexible and in a monsoon or a hurricane, hurricane it, uh, it could just flex over and bend in the wind like a palm tree so instead of snapping off so I'm thinking that's why they naturally have thin trunks but with pruning and that you can develop a fairly good trunk on these ficus liratus fiddle leaf figs so that's what we'll go for is you know keep pruning it over the years and develop that trunk and the root system and I think we'll get a really nice tree in the end, a really unique bonsai, one that uh, bends all the rules. <laughs> okay, so I'm starting to get some really nice flare at the base of the trunk, which isn't up here, the base is down lower, so that is really good. We like our trunk flare at the base here. And I'm getting close to the point where I think I can wash the roots and see exactly what's going on here. Okay, I'm going to take that over and get them washed up. I've got the root system washed and it's quite exciting. There is a lot of good flare at the base of this tree. So I'm going to prune off these roots that are higher up so I can get my radial root system developing down lower and keep that nice flare on the trunk. So let me get out some pruners and I'll prune off some of these higher roots. All right, so I'll, I'll come in with the knob cutter and I've got to take this one off. Like that. And That. Snob cutters are a little small for this root, but we'll get there. There. Got that off. There's another root here. Let's come off. One here. Like that. And I've got to take this one off too. Like that. So that gets you know, that widest part of my trunk exposed, and then I'll develop the radial root system down here. That should work out quite well. And the rest of the roots look pretty good. I can always prune these. Yeah, I'll get rid of a couple of these. I was gonna say I could prune them off later, but I'll do it now. And I think that's good. I think that's quite good. Um, I will want, there's some roots 
you can see some of these roots have grown out, hit the edge of the pot, and then start going weird directions. So I'll prune that off. The strange direction part. Here's another one that's come out and curled around. So I'll prune that back. Like that. There's another one here. Prune that back. Just sorting out the root system. Anything growing down, I'll deuce back a lot. There's a long root here I can prune back. One growing uphill there. A little more combing here. There's still some soil in there. Okay, I think it's not perfect. I can see removing these higher roots later on, but I don't want to remove everything. I think I've got it down to a good safe amount of roots and it's ready for planting. I'll just give it a final wash to get some of this old soil off that was stuck in here between the roots. I've got some drainage screens in the bottom of the pot, so I'll put a base layer of soil in. And then we can plant the tree on top. I'm ready to plant, but there's one more root I think I better prune off. There's a big, thick, vigorous one that's going down, so I'm going to prune it off. Like that. And that way some more radial roots will grow out from that cut point. So I think for the front of the tree, I think somewhere there is pretty good. Looks decent. And I'll see about the planting height. It's got to come down a bit. I think that's not a bad height there. And I'll try and arrange the roots the best I can. That's looking pretty good. And then I'll add some more bonsai soil. And again, I'm just going to plant the tree kind of in the center of the pot. I just want to grow a radial root system. This is just getting the tree underway as a bonsai. It's just the first steps. We're not too worried about aesthetics at this point in time. I'm really excited about this tree. I think it's going to be fantastic. I'm really excited about developing that root base, getting some branches on the top of the tree, It'll be a very unusual bonsai. Giant leaves on it, but I think it'll be come one of my favorites if it if all goes well. I love seeing unusual trees as bonsai. Okay, well, it's still a little wiggly in there. I'm going to work the soil in more. That's better. I think I need to mound the soil up a bit. That looks good. I'll get the tree watered. All right, here I go with the water. Grow. And again, I'll, I'll place the tree in the greenhouse just to keep it out of the wind. Keep it nice and warm and humid until the roots get established. A lot of my trees start off as sticks in a pot like this but eventually they develop into a nice tree-like form. So I'm hoping the same happens with this stick in a pot. As the tree recovers and grows, I'll keep my eye on the root base here and see if this starts swelling up. It should, now that I've got all the roots kind of sorted out in a more radial pattern, it should start thickening up at the base and getting some buttressing happening. I've got lots more trees to plant and get underway as bonsai but I'll have to continue on in part three. I started tearing apart the truck yesterday and painting it and everything, and I've got to get back to doing that work. Uh, so I'm going to end the video, but I will tag on the truck work at the end of the video. So if you want to watch what I did to the orchard truck, you can stay tuned. So that's it for today for the bonsai work. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the bonsai zone. It's a beautiful day today. 
So I'm doing a little work on the truck, just getting it all fixed up. One thing's led to another. After a heavy rain, I noticed there was some water down in the corner of the passenger's footwell here. So I, I took out the carpet, I peeled it back, I took out the door sills, which were really rotted, I'll show you those. Um, they're in the back here. And you can see there's, there were aluminum and there's holes through them. And they had to put some extra screw holes in because it was just so corroded. So I've got some new ones on order. They uh, should look exactly the same as these. They're on back order actually. So, and, uh, so I took the door sills out, peeled the carpet back, and the, the floor is supposed to be painted red. You can see over here, there's some of the original color there. And in the back seat, it's also red. So I've, uh, I started painting the floor in this area just so water wouldn't uh, cause any rusting. And then I went up top and they patched the one major hole, but I uh, had some leaking on this sill and I was scraping around. There's a factory seam sealer that they run along here to stop water getting in. And when the seam sealer contracts, it cracks, and then allows moisture in, and then it starts rotting. So I was scraping around. There's a lot of pitting in this area, but there was some major holes in this area, perforations. And the only way to really fix that is to take everything out of the cab, the headliner, the windshield, and everything. So. Oh, there's a crack in the windshield. I just noticed there's a crack in the windshield, not a crack, but there's a chip out of it on the inside. They must have hit it with something. Anyway, um, back up here. So I've peeled out all the old seam sealer. I left it in place where it's good and I've scraped it out, wire brushed it, sanded it down to the metal and primed it. And then in this area, I can't go in and weld this unless I take everything apart again. So I put some gas tank epoxy in here. It's a putty that you mix together, you knead, and then it's a two part epoxy and I squished it all in the hole. So that'll work for now. It'll uh, strengthen that area and keep the moisture out. I also had to fix the driver's side up here. It was all, you can see the putty I've put in there. Yeah, it was all, it was perforated. There's holes going through the bottom of the lip here. And there's one going inside the uh, A pillar here. So that would run down into the, well, it should drain out the uh, fender well here, but I don't know, it's possible it could drain into the interior too. And probably has so that that's fixed now it's not the perfect fix I mean ideally you'd have to you know redo all this this area with metal and maybe someday I'll do it but uh, for now I'm just trying to get the thing patched together and running that's the goal on the driver's side you can see those door sills it's supposed to be joined here it's two separate pieces and it's all corroded away. So I'm going to take that out too. That'll be replaced. Um, I'm going to take the carpet out. I don't like the carpet in here because moisture stays underneath the carpet and I want to paint all the floor. So I've got the front seat all loose. So I'll be removing that, taking the carpet out front and rear and painting the floor red. And then I think I'll just put like a mat in here and that way it won't get any moisture collecting in the floor. I'll see it and it can evaporate. It won't get trapped under the carpet. This is the back seat area. I've got the back seat out and you can see the red floor down here. That's what it should look like. So I'll have to scrape off all this carpet glue and that and get the floor all cleaned up and painted. The gas tank I've almost used up what, what gasoline I had in it. So it's getting close to empty. And then I can take the gas tank out and fix the leak in it. I've got a rag down here in the corner that's kind of soaking it up. 
It doesn't leak very much. And it only seems to leak when I fill it to a certain point. So that's a good sign. It, uh, it probably means that it's not leaking from the seam down below here, that the hole is probably higher up in the gas tank. So I can probably use the gas tank putty on that to fix it. So that's, that's a good thing. Up top here on the fuel line, uh, they had cut the line, someone did, and there was a rubber fuel line bridging it, and they just had uh, zip ties on each side. So it was leaking. I took the zip ties out and replaced them with hose clamps. I retorqued the gas filler, or the sender unit, this cap down, and that seems to stop any leakage on that. So yeah, hopefully when I get that gas tank fixed, Hopefully the putty will do the job and then I can not worry about it smelling like gasoline again. At the back of the cab here, I've got the same problem with the rain gutter. Um, I've got rusting in this area, so I'll have to scrape that down. Hopefully there's no holes going through and it's solid, but I don't know. I'll see when I get that done. And there's some problems up on the roof there too. There's a problem on the rear window here. So yeah. Just minor things that I keep keep having to work on. Julian and I have been working hard. We've got the interior out of the truck. That's the front seat there, the carpets. And below the carpets is the floor. And you can see the original red color right here. Untouched, never seen sunlight before. Really nice. So there's the corner up there that I painted. So we've got everything apart and cleaning it out. We're just working on scraping all this. There was sound deadening material on the floor. So I'm just been working on scraping that all down. Julian's helping me. Getting it down as smooth as we can. And then we'll try, try getting it down to the metal, or not the metal, but the paint. Uh, I might have to use soap and water or something to try and clean it up finally. And then the goal is to paint the whole floor red and then I'll just have a like a floor mat in the driver and passenger side and two at the back that way moisture won't get trapped in here at all it'll be a little louder in the truck but I kind of like how loud the truck is so it's getting later in the day Julian and I have been working on the floor in here and we've been scraping it down with the scraper and then we found the best thing to get the glue off is to soak it in turpentine and then uh, it softens the glue up and then you can scrape it off with the scraper I'll show you that yeah once it's soft see how it gets gooey like that you can scrape it off with the scraper and then the final spot is you get the rag and you just rub it and you can get every last trace of the the glue off the floor and you can see this section's done and Julian's been working over this side and it's looking really good yeah so everything's everything's out of the interior it looks it's huge in here it's like a van almost you know if you put one seat in the driver's seat you would almost have like a cargo van here it's really big once I get all these floors painted, then I can put the seats back in. It's getting towards the end of the evening. And I've been making good progress on the floor. I'll show you what it looks like now. Here it is. So all the glue is off, at least the back part. You can see where they made it the crew cab. So that's the seam where the regular truck would end. And then this is the extension back here. That makes it a four-door pickup truck. So back then they were handmade. They would take a regular two-door pickup truck and then they would convert it to a four-door. They would cut down the doors. You can see the seam on the door over there where it was cut and shortened to make the smaller door at the back. Yeah, so they were all handmade, these cabs. Amazing. So I've got the front to go. I've got this area here and up by the uh, shift lever there. Um, 
to get all the uh, stuff off. I use the wire brush to get the, you know, the carpet remains off and kind of get the, uh, it, it started, thin down, I guess is the word. And then uh, I'm left with that glue and then I'm using the turpentine and the scrapers and getting that off. So I'm going to paint the center panel. I'm going to take it off once I get all the bolts exposed. I'm going to take it off, try and straighten out those, that crooked part near the shifter there. And I'm going to paint that black. So I'll have the black up front, the rest will be all red. And then I've got the black in the uh, footwells at the back here. Or not footwells, the steps I guess. Yeah, so that's the progress for today. Hi little bunny. There's a little bunny sitting out front here. There he is. Hi. Hello little bunny. Can you see him there? He's so tiny. Hi. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> I'm working on getting the center panel out now. The one that's around the shift lever. And remember how I said I was going to paint that black? Well, it is black from the factory. I was digging around. So you can see up there it's painted black. So that'll look nice, the black centerpiece surrounded by red. Yeah, there's some grinding here. They fixed some holes in the floor. They didn't even didn't prime it or anything. It's just raw metal. So I'll have to prime that and paint it. And I found some more uh, holes in the floor on the other side, I'll show you. Over here on the driver's side, I found, it's not a big problem, but you can see down here, there's where the metal is welded to the other piece here. There's a hole through the floor there. That's a screw hole there. And there's another few holes there. So I think I'm going to have to get that patched up. And I have to think how I'm going to do that. I could rivet a panel in there, but I don't know. I might weld a panel in, I'd, I'll have to see. Anyway, that's, that's the only other problem with the floor I found. The rest is really good. Well, this is all repaired. I think the handbrake, I think it's supposed to go into that hole there. And you can see the foot brake. And you can see it's going through over here. Might have to fix that. I think I'll have to check that, but yeah, so I'm soaking this uh, this seam between this black cover over the transmission and the body. It's all sealed in with this goop, this goop, this black tarry sealant. So I'm putting the turpentine on it and that loosens the tar up and then peeling it off with a with a little uh, scraper and then and I'm uh, soaking the glue around the uh, bolts there so they'll be easier to turn and then hopefully I'll be able to pull this panel out the shift knob just unscrews I already loosened that so yeah I think it'll look really good in here all red steel no I'll put like a individual carpet each side but uh, It'll all just be painted inside. It should look quite nice, the sort of red and black theme. Hi everyone, it was a fun day working on the truck today. I did stop and water my bonsai trees, but other than that, I've just been working on the truck. So I did, I got that panel out. And you can see the transmission, the drive shaft, and there's a cross member, and the exhaust. So, pretty cool view. Everything looks good. Everything's painted when they had the uh, body off. So, just needs a bit of cleanup and it'll be good. Here's that panel. This is the underside of it. And it's in good shape too. It just needs uh, wire brushing. I'll paint the underside and the top, get it all cleaned up. Try and straighten those crooked flanges. And then, you know, I'll paint everything red and that part black put it all back together. So there was, if you look at the driver's footwell, there was already some rust starting to show through. So it wasn't really painted very good. That's just the paint that came on the panel when, you know, they bought it. So it's not painted very good. So I'll wire brush all that down and 
paint it all red. And then I'll have to deal with this hole here down here. So I might buy a MIG welder and tackle this project myself, welding in a panel here. I think that'd be, you know, a good project to start learning how to MIG weld. Because I'll need the MIG welder for my Porsche 911 that I have in the backyard. And I'll have to do all the work on that myself because it's a big job and I can't afford to get someone else to do it. So I'll just have to do it all myself, Julian and I. We'll have to work on the Porsche. He's really excited about the Porsche, so I think, yeah, he'll help me out on that project. And yeah, things are coming together in here. Got to get that gas tank leak fixed. That'll be my next job after all this. Well, actually, I'll probably do that before I paint. That way I won't have gasoline dripping down on the fresh paint. So yeah, I'll pull that out before I paint all the floors. They don't need much painting, just, you know, places where they're scratched up. And it's funny, the scratches on this floor, there's scratches underneath the glue that glues the carpet down. So that means that the floor was scratched by the people who built this truck. Came with scratches right from the factory, so. My wife was joking that, you know, you'll have to take your shoes off before you come into this truck eventually. I'll be worried about people. Oh, don't scratch my painted floor. <laughs> no, I won't do that. Yeah, so that's today's work. Lots of tearing apart, cleaning, fixing. Yeah, tomorrow is another day. I'll begin rinsing the trees, so I'll start by spraying underneath with just clear rainwater. Ah, cut. Clear rainwater. 